Oh, there we are. There, there we you are. Go. Look at this. How we doing? How are you? Oh, I'm great. I'm great. How are you? Oh, I'm 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 not doing too bad, man. Considering what's uh what's going on right now. As 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 far as what aspect of what's going on? I mean, you're you're fighting. Uh, yeah, yeah. As far as, as far as the wrist, but everything considered, you know, not doing too bad. It's more annoying than uh, than anything. Is this uh what? I always tread lightly around injuries because sometimes wrestlers like to talk about them. Sometimes it's a sore subject. Um, is this your first quote unquote major injury? Um, I'd say so. This is my first bone break in general. Oh, um, I've had a couple an ankle injuries just through training and through, uh, through working other matches and stuff. But, uh, otherwise, yeah, this is my first major, major injury. Uh, for those of you just tuning in, uh, we are speaking to joining us tonight is the great Mick Brickhouse McGuire. Uh, phenomenal uh, individual up in Canada, independent wrestler. Thank so, you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited for the show. I'm glad you've joined us tonight. I'm glad you've give, given us your time. Uh, of course. Time, of yeah. course. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, anytime. If you are not on this, this is my new favorite leadoff question. Love it. Uh, if you were not on this show tonight, what would you be doing? I'd probably be studying tape. I'm not. Uh, I'm not gonna lie with you. Most of my most of my nights are watching old wrestling, like old old wrestling. That's that is a spectacular. I look behind me because there's some old school wrestling on the small TV at the bar. It's gonna be what's hard. Going to it's what's right going on? Who is it? That's Glacier. Oh, Glacier. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's some, some mid nineties WCW yeah. stuff going on there. Big, All right. Big shout out to Glacier. We've been, we talk about Glacier a lot on this show. We've got a lot of nightmare factory people. Um, come on here, mention him. So when you watch tape and you watch, uh, old school wrestling, what's old school wrestling to you? So, um, recently, you know, in the past year or so, I have found myself being very fond of mid South wrestling and so, a lot of territory wrestling. That's my niche. I like 80s, 80, 80s Southern wrestling is my, wrestling. my is my new my new kind of favorite thing to emulate, my favorite thing to study, just because I think it's so simplistic and it's very like I can't say realistic, but everything that you see on there you can believe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I and that's 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 what wrestling is to me. That is interesting. I, I wouldn't I guess it's always interesting to hear what people now, what people go back to watch as far as quote unquote old school. Um, I'm terrible with ages, but I assume I'm older than you, uh, and you're um, of the yeah. of the I younger assume. variety. Uh, so when you tell me you're going back to watch uh, some '80s Mid South wrestling, I that gets me excited because it it makes I guess this is a judgment by me but i do judge books by their cover and stuff so you must be into the realism in wrestling uh psychology hard hitting all that type of stuff i think wrestling is best when it's simple and easy to follow and you can believe it exactly per personally like mid-atlantic wrestling is some of the best storytelling that you can see guys like greg valentine and wahoo mcdaniel crazy yeah. crazy simple stuff Greg, Greg breaks Wahoo's leg. Yeah. What does Wahoo do? He comes back to for revenge. Yeah. It's not it's, it's not rocket science. Uh, and go yeah. ahead, go ahead. Guys like uh, Jim Crockett Promotions with the Four Horsemen and Dusty, Nikita, Magnum TA, the Rock and Roll Express, the Midnight Express. All those guys are just incredible to watch, and I just love the I love the week to week television. I mean, there was a lot of filler. I will say during that time, but when the, when the main event matches did come around and the pay-per-views did pay off, they were incredible. Um, you, you say it perfectly. We, we listened to a lot of Busted Open on this show. Uh, yeah. Bully Ray, one of the, the hosts on there, and he says it all the time. Uh, wrestling is simple. You just got to keep it simple, stupid. That's it. Mm -hmm. Just keep it simple, and uh, you can go far in the world of wrestling. Uh, that's going to lead me to, to the question on heels and faces because back then – Heels and faces were clear cut. You knew right yeah. away who was a heel, who was a face. Um, my question for you is, uh, what do you prefer? Um, I guess, do you prefer as a, as a fan of wrestling? And do you prefer 
uh as as a wrestler itself like what comes more natural to you stuff like that um so i always have enjoyed having a uh underdog to root for mm. and just having someone to get behind you know what i mean like my my guy, my guy growing up was jeff hardy okay funnily enough not very reflective in the work that i do yeah. but just as the kind of the alternative hero to John Cena, right? I didn't, I didn't mind John Cena, but I was a big Jeff Hardy guy. So that being said, underdogs, underdogs to root for, probably my, probably my top as a fan to, to watch. Okay. Um, guys like Ricky Morton, incredible underdog baby face. Um, Bobby Eaton's run in back in '91, right when he separated from uh, the Midnight Express and got that little. TV title run with uh, against Arn Anderson. Yeah, I was just saying Arn Anderson. That was a that's a great feud. Absolutely, but as a as a wrestler, I love being a babyface. I can't like I don't have a mean streak in my body. I I find it hard to be a heel sometimes. I don't mind doing it when I when I have to do it, but I I much more prefer to be a babyface. I just find it more a lot more natural for myself. Um, you mentioned you were a, a fan of uh, Jeff Hardy, and it's not resembled uh, in your in-ring work and ability. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. I love that. I love hearing that from wrestlers. There's been We've had a few on here that said uh, they looked up to The Undertaker, but their style was extremely the opposite yeah, of exactly. Taker's. For sure. Uh, yeah. For those of you, and we're talking to uh, Mick Brickhouse McGuire, if you're just tuning in. For those of you that may have never seen you in the ring, and I know Vanessa, and you'll hear her voice occasionally, has seen you several times. But for those of you that have never seen you, how would you describe your uh, in-ring prowess? I would say a slow, brawling, similar, akin to Arn Anderson or Greg Valentine. Um, I take my time. And, and that, that's what I, that's what I like. Like I, I enjoy big moves and big moments and stuff, but I like when they're spaced out and you get the most out of, out of stuff when you slow right down and you may get people to process the things that you do. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I can get the same reaction, punching somebody in the face as to opposed to doing a dive, I'd rather <laughs> punch somebody in the face. <laughs> yeah, me too. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you let it sink in, right? Let the fans exactly. It's, it's wrestling is about emotions. It's, it's about that emotional roller coaster, letting people get invested in your story and you as the character. Um, Vanessa said to me uh, today when we were talking and uh, pre-gaming for this, she said, uh, "You give her uh, Walter or Gunther vibes." Um, yeah, I've uh, I've heard that from a couple different people before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll have to. I watched some of your match. I'm going to have to go now. Now that that's in my head, go back and, and watch that. But the fact that you're telling me, uh, like Greg the Hammer Valentine, like you're slowing it down and yeah. uh, you're getting the same investment, uh, you know, out of a, a, a solid Arn Anderson left punch to the face uh, exactly. as, you, as you are, you know, Jeff Hardy, your fan, as you uh, are a swanton. Same, same thing. Yeah. It's the same stuff. Like, it has its time and its place. Yeah. Everything has its time and its place. Um, to you, how much psych, how much uh, does psychology play a role in a match for you? It should be one of the first and foremost things that you think about when you're putting together a match. Yeah. Everything should make sense. Everything should fit together perfectly. And I'm I'm just not a fan of moves for the sake of moves. I find it awesome that guys can do 450 splashes and uh, Canadian destroyers and all these things, but they have to be placed in certain places for it to mean something. You know what I mean? I do. I do. Like, I think, yeah, I think you can really wear out a crowd by doing too much in the first couple matches. And then by the time the main event comes around, they're tired. Mm -hmm. They've seen everything on the show. Sure. I mean, uh, th there's rumor. I mean, my sources are telling me uh, fans, you know, when they tape AEW Rampage, it's so long because they do Dynamite Live, then they'll tape mm -hmm. Rampage. It's so long. And, you know, AEW's great, but that has some of that let's go full throttle, pedal to the metal to 
start of matches, they're walking out near the end of Rampage. Absolutely. That's a long show. Like I went to, I go to Raw's, uh, you know, Monday Night Raw, and that's friggin' long too. Absolutely. Uh, so I totally get that aspect. Um, as far as in ring work, psychology, I can, I can, I feel you got a great mind, uh, for this sport. Where'd you take your first bump? Where'd you, where'd you go train? Where'd you do all that fun stuff? So I trained out of the Tyson Dukes wrestling factory oh, in London, Ontario. My friend Tyson Dukes. So I started when I was 16 years old. I was in my last year of high school. Um, and I just kind of gave it some thought thinking, man, I've watched wrestling all my life. Right. Why not give it, why not give it a shot? Let's see what happens. And uh, my first few weeks of wrestling training were really brutal because I was very out of shape, very uh, – I hadn't quite grown into my body yet. Okay. I, was a, I was a kid in a grown man's body. Well, you said 16, right? Yeah, 16. That is your last year of high school? But yeah, yeah, last year of high school. I, t- I had turned 17. Oh. Uh, or I was about to turn 17. Okay, I got you. Yeah, okay. So it was my first semester of – first semester of grade 12 is when I started. Wow. Um, and yeah, so I've been going at it for about four years now, I guess going on. Yeah. Going on, going on four years now. Yeah. Crazy. I, mean, yeah. I never really thought about that, but yeah, that's crazy. Um, I got a couple of things to, to go off of that. So, okay. So we've had Tyson Dukes on this show, uh, probably when we started ramping it up more, my, gosh, two years ago by now at the start of the pandemic, uh, and um, so did you get that whole slowing down, uh, letting it soak in, uh, getting the people, the crowd invested, um, uh, less is more type of stuff from uh, Dukes' school? Um, yes, um, partially from him and partially from listening to more old school guys. Like okay. I, I have a couple podcasts I listen to for psychology, Jim Cornette for what – for what right. Cornette will say some things that I don't agree with. Right. He'll go on a little too much sometimes, but if you listen to his breakdowns, yeah. And I, I like the history that he talks about. Right. Like Well, we talk about that things... a lot on here too. Like Cornette, people don't like him, but he's playing a character. No. Exactly. And you can still pull away uh especially for yourself who's who's in the business and pull away valuable information exactly. to use for sure um as of recent i've found that uh dutch mantel ah, yeah. is a very very good mind when it comes to these things because he doesn't have the gimmick like Cornette does he right. doesn't get angry he doesn't go on these tirades he just tells you what he likes what he doesn't like and how you can fix it and how you can fit into the modern day using an old school flair yeah Dutch Mantel. Um, I forget the name of his podcast. It's on the MLW. Get the name. I think it's just talking with Dutch, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Yep, that's it. That's it. Uh, phenomenal. But mind. um, a lot of the in-ring work of the slowing down of the technical wrestling de- came right directly from Dukes. All my technical wrestling ability that, like, I have so much in my back pocket if I need to pull out, if we need to go, if I need to have a chain wrestling match, if I need to do something like that yeah. i have so much knowledge because of tyson tyson dukes is probably the best coach that you can ever have um you you started there like you said your last uh semester or, w- or whatever when you were 16 at the end of your high school career did you play sports in school um i played football for two years and i grew up playing a bunch of different sports i did soccer i did baseball none of them really clicked i enjoyed football but it wasn't wasn't for me no um no just i i enjoyed it like the team aspect i liked playing with friends but that's really the only reason why i did it honestly um wrestling has just always been that next level of sports plus this or entertainment plus this you know what i mean it's more it's a more investment i'm a more I shouldn't say solo act, but I enjoy focusing on myself. Do you have any background in uh, like theater and acting? Because I know we've talked to a lot 
of wrestlers that that do that i uh i never did any theater or acting i no actually no? not just just myself yeah yeah no that's fine so what was it okay so you you did the football you tried it you tried these other sports uh you enjoyed football but it wasn't clicking uh yeah wh when did it click with you when you're like shit this is something uh i want to do i can do well i think i got I, I honestly got the bug after the first week of going to duke's school yeah. yeah, like I, I've always dreamed about doing it, and you know, it's 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 the same old tale. Ever since I was a kid, right. I've always wanted right. to be a wrestler. Yeah, knew that from everybody, but it's true, right? So, like, my first memory of wrestling was watching Rosie and the Hurricane when I was three years old on Monday <laughs> Night Raw back in four. We were just discussing the Hurricane last show. He's in some of there the most go. the greatest segments ever in wrestling. Absolutely, Austin the Rock, Absolutely. and then you you saw him with Rosie. Who rest in peace? I believe he has passed, but um, yeah. yeah, that's that's awesome. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I just uh, yeah, that's what really inspired me. I, like my dad was the one to show to get me into wrestling, and I remember watching old school wrestling with Hogan and Macho Man Andre and all those guys back when I was seven, eight, with my grandparents showing me all the old tapes that they had and stuff. So. I've always grown up around wrestling, so that really helped push the idea forward in my head. What I really enjoy about you is you are a young wrestler, and you're 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 studying, you're putting the work in, uh, and you you got this mindset from uh, Tyson Dukes' school. Uh, you, you you your mind is focused on what you need to do, so you're going back to learn from those people that did it back then. It's just so like comforting uh, to know like you're going back and watching Arn Anderson TV title runs, and no, absolutely no one's sold it better than him. And because you never know what what little things you're gonna find in there, right? Hey. Like I I was watching a the other day I was watching a, a, most of the opening matches in the first season of Mid South Wrestling featured Brian Blair, right? Yeah, yeah. So by, but before he was the killer bee, yeah, that's so right. This was back in '82, so he was just Brian Blair, yep. wearing his regular blue trunks, regular black boots. But most of his offense were just pins, yeah. And I've never seen the pins before, like ever. Yeah, half of these pins that he would do, I've never seen them used, even in modern day AEW or modern indie wrestling or. Yeah. Anything like that, and it would fit right right into place, and I just think a lot of that stuff is overlooked nowadays. Uh, it's and it's so uh, I I don't even think I described it and did it justice. It's so refreshing because I think I think you easily could be like, oh, I could do this big powerful move and do this and get the crowd. I could do that. I could probably I could probably put in less work and still get a sort of the same investment but you're actually putting in more work or at least i think you are putting in more uh, uh groundwork and building roots for yourself to to have a, a, to make people uh invested i'm going to use the word invested again to make people care uh for the long term and uh as far as match career all that fun stuff goes for yourself and i i, I think uh you won't burn out i i believe i don't know i'm not a wrestler but i feel like you won't burn out as much as someone that does a 450 I, i'm hoping not that's that's also part of the reason why i wrestle the way i wrestle is because uh, to be honest i'm not a i'm not a very athletic guy yeah eh? um the style that i wrestle reflects that not in a bad way but it just shows like i could never like I've never come off the top rope ever. I've never, ever once in my wrestling career. I plan on it at some point, but most of my stuff, like my, my biggest move is a second rope axe handle, like classic savage right there. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And most, most of my stuff is boots to ground and slow submissions and heavy strikes. Yeah, well, yeah, that's Walter. That's what that's what I was saying, Walter. Uh, exactly. We all know. Uh, promos, big part of wrestling as far as 
also psychology and ring work. Uh, who do you go back and watch for promos? So a lot of the guys that, that I watched weren't great promo guys. Yeah. But did it? Okay, um, go ahead. I'll let you go first. So you, you see Greg Valentine. He yeah. was he was okay. Yeah. He wasn't bad. Bobby Eaton never spoke a word in his life. Nope. Didn't need to. Promo. No. no, he didn't. He had Cornette and Stan Lane to talk for him, and even Dennis Condry at some points, yeah. and and even Pauly dangerously when he was part of the Dangerous Alliance. Yep. Right? So, yep. but um, mo- most of the time, I like to go with uh, with Arn Anderson. Arn Anderson, he's a, he's a cold-blooded killer, despite yeah. looking like an like a uncle at a barbecue. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's... Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's actually crazy. You just get invested. You see a, this balding guy with these polo glasses and wearing his polo button-up shirt, and you're like, okay, what's this? Then you then you listen to one of his eyes or one of his lines. I got the eyes of a cold-blooded killer, and I got the fire of a criminal in the streets. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, this guy's gonna kill me. Um, and it, it's interesting. And all the people you pointed out right there. Uh, Valentine, Bobby, and and Arn Anderson, um, they didn't need to do the promos. They didn't. Their in ring work did stood for itself. And I think the fact that we never got to see them do the promos, like Bobby Eaton or Valentine, um, because that fit their character. That fit what they did. Arn the same way. Arn could Arn could be extremely silent and still strike fear because that's yeah because. The, uh, but- yeah, um, because Arn Arn took his promos more seriously. Yes, you know what I mean. He 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 wasn't really the yelling type, but when he did yell, yeah, it would mean something. <laughs> Honestly, one of my favorite promo guys, funny enough, is Earthquake. I'm not gonna lie to you, John Tenta. I, yeah. I love the, the big man yelling promo because it's not it's not done enough anymore. It it got kind of fizzled out when around the end of Hulkamania. Yeah. And I think I think that aggression and kind of larger than life appearance also really helps. So I like striking a balance between between both of those. Um, we've talked about Tyson Dukes' school, so you obviously have uh, some of the Hammerlock Pro Wrestling shows uh, yes. that you're a part of. I know Chem Valley is where Vanessa's seen you most recently. I think you've done some stuff for Smash Wrestling as well. I- I have yes, yes, for sure. Yeah. So you're making the rounds up there uh, in Canada as as well. Uh, do you have anything coming up this weekend? Um, nothing. Oh, nothing that's right, the, motherfucker. Yeah, nothing for the next. <laughs> yeah, nothing for the next six weeks. I had I had a few shows booked. <laughs> I it's been a long day, Brickhouse. It's all good, brother. I don't blame you. It's okay. I forget about it half the time too, man. Yeah. It's and what we were talking so much about your psychology and I was like, Mom, I gotta see him in the ring now." And 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 I have written down on my board it says promote Hammerlock Pure Wrestling shows. I'm like, "Okay, I don't have a date, so let me see what he's got coming up." And as soon as I said it, I'm like, "Wait a minute, he's got, bro- he's got a broken wrist." <laughs> so I apologize uh, for that, but okay, you don't worry about it. It's yeah, all good, man. you'll be in the ring soon. Uh, soon, man. We're looking. Six weeks from now is what we're looking. I, I do have a show on October 30th that I'm hoping that I'll be able to make the date for. If everything goes according to plan, if physio goes fine and I get this cast off in, a, in, an, in enough time, I'm planning to be back then. Hey, you could keep that cast on like a Cowboy Bob Orton for the rest of your career if you want. You never know. You never know, man. <laughs> you never know. Keep your eyes peeled. Keep your eyes peeled. Um, Do you have any hidden talents that, that we don't even know about that could help you in the ring? Hidden talents in the ring. I'm oddly flexible. <laughs> that is for, 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 a, for a big dude. You can see the the depth of the Boston crabs that guys can get on me. Oof. It's kind of crazy, actually. Just oddly malleable limbs. But that's that's really about it. I I I can't sing. I can't dance. <laughs> I'm uh, I talk just okay. Hey, you're talking fine tonight. And uh, I'm a, big, I'm, a, I'm a big dude, but that's 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 not really a hidden talent. What'd you say, not Vanessa? Really a talent at all. Oh, I said it's a Johnny. It's like a Johnny Cash song. It's like oh, we play this 
fast because we don't know how to play any faster. I sing how I sing, so I don't know how to sing any different. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That, that sounds about right. You uh, just gotta start coming out in black. You can be the man in black. Oh, an idea. Um, like that. Uh, Vanessa always throws me off my game. I had a, ne a nice, good transitional question to the next one, and now I forgot what it was. Uh, I can't look at my board because I've already screwed that up. Uh, <laughs> I just asked you about hidden talents. I don't know. I don't know where I was going. I had a good question, too. Flexible. Oh, I got it. I found it. This is why the show is so great live. I, I, I was on your Instagram today. Okay. Which is brickhouse .mm. Yes, um, sir. But oh, by the way, can you get that for Twitter? Uh, I do have a Twitter. You, I do have a Twitter. It is it, my yeah. at. Go ahead. Um, it's at Colton Churchill, or sorry, at Colton JJ Seventeen. Um, I can't change my handle unfortunately, but it will say Mick Brickhouse McGuire on my page. Okay, so, perfect. That's my Twitter. So I was on your Instagram, and I'm I'm trying to get photos uh for. Well, for the YouTube thumbnail I'll put out, and I got photos here on the on the stream. And I saw a picture of you, and I think you wrote in the caption. It was like one of those uh, then-now pictures, and I think you said yeah. it was about a two-year transformation. You went from this to this, um, and you looked tremendous. Uh, so so what was what was that like? What went into that? Did you drop a ton of weight or just tone up? What What, what, what went down? So I had a lot of excess weight in the first year of the pandemic. Mm. Um, after wrestling kind of fizzled out, I was so I was kind of on the upward trajectory when wrestling when I made my debut back in 2019 in September. Um, but just six months later, pandemic right. struck, and uh, unfortunately, it wasn't kind to a lot of people. Um, especially to the wrestling community and to the wrestlers itself. That's your main, not necessarily your main line of work, but that's your passion, right? And once your right. passion goes out, a lot of your work ethic and patience go out the window as well. But um, I did find a passion for fitness and health, and I decided to take it, take it upon myself to lose lose some weight. So my lowest that I was at, that picture that you were just talking yeah. about, was uh, I went from about 260 to two, 205. That was my lowest weight that I, that I was at. So the weight came off real quick too, because a lot of my habits were sedentary, and it's just a, it was just a small change that I made in my nutrition, and making sure to do the workouts every night and just put effort into it, stay consistent. Uh, phenomenal. Well, well done out of you. You mentioned the pandemic on the trajectory up. You're trending upwards. It hits, hit us all. But wrestlers hit them even harder. Uh, Canadian wrestlers hit them even harder than that. Um, mm -hmm. Did you have that feeling like you might never go back to wrestling? Honestly, yeah, yeah. When when it first came around, and I'm like, I it, it's like it's like of course that this happens right when you are starting to move, start to get your your wheels moving, yeah. right? Like. It it always happens. You're always on the upwards, and then oh, there's something there. There's your obstacle, and then unfortunately, this obstacle wasn't a wasn't a six week recovery on a broken wrist. Right. It was a two year span for everyone as well. Like everyone was going through hard times at that time, and uh, at some points, I found myself saying, "I do I want to go back after I put all this effort in?" And then it was really for nothing, but um. The bug bit me during the first class that I came back. We were, it was right when things started to reopen again, and uh, we were still wearing masks during the, the training and stuff. And it was, it was a very different experience than what it was, but it was the welcoming back and seeing everyone again that really brought, clicked into my head saying, you know what, I want to do this again. Who'd win in a match, you and you or Tyson? Well, he beat me before, so he's beat me once. I did get a one pinfall on him, but the other two were I passed out in his figure four. That's no. all I'm gonna say. Oh. Gotcha. Did you hear that, Vanessa? Yes. He passed out in the figure four. You heard that, right? I, I did pass out in the figure four. When you pass out, you can't tap out. 
Mm-mm. No, sir. It's just, it's just biologic. I mean, you can't, you can't tap. Didn't tap. Oh, once you're asleep, once you're asleep, your arm can't be doing this. Mm -mm. Your hand can't be doing that. Once you go to sleep, you go to sleep. Some might say poor planning on Tyson Dukes' part. <laughs> Some. Oh, could very well be, but he still won the match, unfortunately. But I'm hoping in the future that uh, I get another shot at him and I can uh, maybe take the mentor this time. I got it. Good. Um, before I give you the mic to put yourself over and we end this spot here, uh, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to put yourself in a triple threat match. Okay. Uh, you're in a triple threat match. It's yourself and, uh, a, a wrestler from today and a wrestler from okay. the past. Um, and, oh, and, uh, you're fighting for a title. What title? Okay. So you, a wrestler from the past, wrestler from now, and you're fighting oh. for a title and what title is it? Oh, good lord! That's oh. that's a tough one. I'm trying to I'm trying to think of a modern wrestler that I'm really enjoying. You know what? I got one for you. All right, for the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship, oh. the original ten pounds of gold, globe globe dome belt. Me versus Bobby Eaton versus Trevor Murdoch. Oh, 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 I oh. like that. Oh, that's a that's two weeks in a row. Someone's called out Trevor Murdoch. Let's do it. Oh. We I'm a big Trevor Murdoch fan. Yeah, he's, but he's him and Nick Aldis are, and you know what, Cody as well. Yeah. Those are my three modern guys that I really enjoy watching. Uh, three great guys uh, to watch to talk to. We've talked to Nick Aldis on here. Uh, I'd like to talk to Trevor Murdoch. Uh, it's hard. Um, and yeah, Cody's a new. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure. So yeah. Oh gosh, ten pounds of. Ten pounds of gold. That's my that's my uh, that's my goal, man. That's still still what I want. That's what I want to get out of this. That's my number one. Yeah. If I can get out anything from this business, I want to I want to win the NWA World Championship. You can do it. If you can, what did I what did I say to my softball team uh, this past weekend? If you can believe, you can achieve. That's what I said. Oh, my friend. I got good faith in you. You stole that from Thank a you. Walmart card, didn't you? Did I? I might have. <laughs> I might have stole it from a Walmart card. I really wanted to have like a really cool phrase and be like, you can't spell achieve without believe. And it took me 10 minutes, I shit you not, 10 minutes to realize you you can spell achieve without believe. But fair enough. Fair enough, you know? So, but it still worked for them. Um, but anyways, Brick House, you've been a, f a pleasure to talk to. Easy to talk to. Uh, thank you, thank so, you, you as well. Great host. Uh, thank you, both of you. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you. Yeah, anytime. Uh, like we said, all our guests, uh, we leave a lot of things on the table in our door open, so you can come back anytime. Uh, especially Absolutely. when you get that yeah. cast off. Um, and you, you get some matches. Oh, has anyone signed the cast? Oh yeah, I got some. Uh, I got I got some of the, the the baby faces from the back and a couple personal friends. Nice. So no heels. Say, no heels can sign. No, them. no, absolutely not. Yes. I, I wouldn't get them to sign my cast. No. That's right. Keep it kayfabe, I got, brother. Uh, we got books and looks on here and Miley on here as well. Ah, dear Three friends of, of the show. Uh, yeah. Well, Brickhouse. Uh, what we do at the end of every show. Uh, I'm going to give you the proverbial mic. You can put over anything you want. You can bury anyone you want. You can say anything you want. I will not interrupt. The floor okay. is yours, my friend. Well, if you would, guys would like to follow me on social media, you can find me on Instagram at BrickHouseMM, Twitter at ColtonJJ17, on Facebook, uh, Mick Brickhouse McGuire yet again. I got matches. I have promos. I got pictures. Um, I do have a website that is in the works right now. Um, merch is not a, yet available online. Um, if you do want merch, uh, you can send me a DM or you can come see me at the shows when I'm back in wrestling. Um, I'll be keeping everybody updated on the, on the injury uh, of the wrist and everything. And, uh, yeah, that's really all I got to say for tonight. I really appreciate the opportunity for having you for ha for having me on your show. Yeah, anytime, man. You get that cast off. You you get some dates. Get some merch you want to sell. Uh, let me know. Let Vanessa know. Uh, we'll get you back on. Um, until then, 
Uh, have yourself a glorious night. Awesome. You too, my friend. Yep. Peace. Take care. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Oh.